Welcome to TPG's Team Manager Primer video. TPG's Team Manager is a SharePoint-based system that addresses the challenges of managing the allocation of resource capacity with ease. The solution can be used in a standalone fashion or integrate with Microsoft's project and portfolio management solution to leverage and collaborate with project managers with their project plans in an electronic fashion. By using Team Manager, functional managers can capture and analyze their respective team members and other resource commitments towards operational, project, and or personal activities like vacations. In making and recording such commitments, the team resources remaining availability is automatically reduced. All this information incorporates time scale and heat map settings that make it easy to read and use. Team Manager is hosted in a SharePoint team site. When integrated with Microsoft PPM solution, as seen here using TPG's Quick Start interface, each team will have a subsite for each team that wishes to use Team Manager. You can also have Team Manager consolidate some or all of your teams to enable you to have an overview of your organization's team data in a controlled and secure manner, which we will see near the end of this video. The TPG Team Manager homepage within the SharePoint Team site hosts the four functionalities that we can navigate to. Here in Plan, this is where we typically invest the majority of our time. Color ranges from blue, which is available, green, requests equal commitments, this reddish orange, requests have not been fulfilled, and gray, where there's no values to be displayed. When you display the Team Manager ribbon, you will see a group of icons titled View. From here, it is possible to navigate back to the homepage or to the other three features. In the matrix section, this is where we can see or make the assignments of team resources to projects. Reports provides graphs of our team data. And in settings, this is where changes to formatting, like colors that are applied, can be changed if so desired. The defaults are actually just fine. Note it is here in settings that you would go to if you desired to add a standard PPM field as a column. It's very easy to get started in using Team Manager. We can begin here in the plan page. If you are just starting out, this is what the plan page will look like before it is populated. Before we can proceed to make edits, we need to click the checkout icon which is found in the ribbons plan group set of icons. And when you're done your session, it's a good practice to check in your data, which also saves it. To begin using Team Manager, you will need to identify the level of detail to capture with regards to your team's absences and the operations related activities. For absences, this would include things that affect attendance like vacation, jury duty, etc. We can add these items to absences section by selecting the heading and clicking the add item button from the ribbon and entering a title. And general operations related activities, which would include various functions of the team, support, maintenance, and or improvement initiatives, etc. To do so, select the operations section and click the add item and provide a title. And use the delete item if you wish to undo it. Having the absences and operations related activities set up will enable this level of detail to be used as a template when we add our resources next. Note you can add individual operations to each resource individually. To add resources manually, select the resource row and select add item. But if you have Microsoft PPM, you simply click the resource icon, which will import the resources matching your team's resource breakdown structure and the resources will be populated below the projects role. Expanding the resource details, you will notice that the structure absence and operations detail we created is now applied. In addition, the capacity in hours has also been populated and rolls up to the summary row. The data is currently filled in with a blue background since we have not assigned any of the capacity yet. But as we get to the ideal of full utilization, the cells will be filled in green. For example, if we were to enter Bill White's January vacation, you will see the summary go green because the summary of his absence and or operations 
are equal to his capacity of 128 hours in this case. At this point, you are ready to begin entering absences and operations related commitments. Notice as well that when we enter data, the team manager updates columns such as the one containing the Sigma symbol as its title, which summarizes the totals for the year. And there's also the totals column for the entire row. Of course, the timescale can be adjusted using the timescale icons and your resources, project, absences, and operations can be ordered to meet your preferences using the move up and move down buttons also found on the ribbon. Next, add the projects that your team is working on. Again, if you use PPM, you can pull that information right into Team Manager using the projects icon. Here I can see reddish orange background field values across various months where there is a request that has not been committed to. We see that this is the case on the projects row from the month of March onwards. By drilling down, we can see which project the requests are coming from. We can also see whom the project is requesting or using by clicking the details checkbox, which will split the view horizontally and show us the resources requested and committed information for the selected project. From the generic resource, Business Analyst, we can see that we have 144 requested hours over a three month period. We can also see that Bill White is available. So we will go ahead and assign him these hours. We can use copy and paste icons to do this or manually when required. After this operation, the Tacoma project is now set in green. We've managed to meet its resource requirements. If you are using PPM, you can publish this information back to the project manager as I will show you later. We also have a request from the Upgrade SharePoint Services project. When we selected it, we noticed the business analyst is requested for a total of 248 hours over a two month period, April and May. To assign someone from the team to this request, you can use the matrix icon and then use the checkbox to assign the resource to the projects. Red check marks here indicate that there is an existing commitment in place. Those that are in gray are requests or they've simply been assigned to the project but without any hours committed to them yet. Let's return to the plan and commit hours to Bill White on the Upgrade SharePoint Servers project. In addition to the copy and paste functionality, you can drag a selection by using the anchor at the bottom right corner of your selection to copy your data to immediately above or below your selection. In demonstrating the copy and paste operation here, I just happened to use the negative values from the business analyst summary row. In making this commitment, I really wanted to enter positive values. So to edit your cells, you can double click the cell to edit it or similar to Excel, press the F2 function key on your keyboard to enter the edit mode, make your change, and then press enter or the tab key on your keyboard. There is also a column titled auto that has a checkbox next to projects that you can select. This will automatically commit requests. You might consider using this feature if there is a high priority project that needs its requests to be satisfied first. Now, as you can see, we have succeeded to satisfy our requests for February in addition to those in January. Note, there's another way to assign resources to projects directly from this plan page. To do so, select the project you wish to assign your team resources to and click the project button that is located in the display group of the ribbon. Then, select the resource and click the add item button. To remove the filter, simply click the icon again. You may need to make a selection within the table first to enable this icon. Information on this screen can be filtered further to help you isolate and focus on the information you wish to look at and work with by making selections from the checklist in the side pane. We are about to end this functional manager's tutorial of Team Manager, but take note that if you're using Microsoft's PPM solution with Team Manager, you will want to communicate your updates with respect to the project commitments to the respective project managers. To do so, simply click the publish button 
which also saves your changes. And then check in. And note, with Team Manager, you can also have team sites set up that consolidate the various teams in your organization. These sites work in exactly the same way, except that it provides read-only access to the Team Manager data at the team level. No resource names will appear, thus providing the user with an overview of some or all of its teams, depending on how they have been configured. By the way, this is where you use the Teams icon to pull in all the updated team data that has been published by the functional managers. You can use the hyperlink team name to navigate to the actual team manager team site to see the resource names and work on updates again, etc. This hierarchy here is managed by an administrator who has access to the site contents list titled TPG Team Manager Teams. It's in this straightforward list where the hierarchy is defined. Now, as a project manager in PPM, you should find a project detail page titled TPG Team Link within your projects. We can see here that this project has all its requests met because of the green bar on the summary row. We also see that our resources for this project come from the development team. Yet, within the development team, we can see that the business analyst generic resource has that reddish orange shading. That's because the functional manager satisfied the request by committing Bill White to meet the project manager's request. Now it's up to the project manager to go back into his or her project plan and replace the business analyst with Bill White and publish the update. This then will be reflected here uh, to make Bill White also appear in green and remove the reddish orange from the business analyst. Use the refresh button to get the latest updates from the project plan and the team manager and the save button, which saves the currently loaded data into a document library in the project site. So when the user logs back in next time, he or she will see their data as they left it in this PDP. We hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.